Hey everybody, today we're going to install some Bill Stein 5100s on a 4Runner 5th generation with KDSS and I'm going to share my experience with you and hopefully you can learn a thing or two to have a successful install. Here are a few before and after pictures. Uh, the stock is noticeably lower than the Bill Stein 5100s and I did go one notch up uh, so it's not completely stock Bill Steins, I did go one notch up from the bottom to give it a more level look. First thing you're going to want to do is take out the two 19 millimeter bolts at the lower ball joint area there. And you're going to loosen the camber adjusting bolts and again I would mark these first, uh, so when you go to reassemble this, you have a general idea of where you're going to put these back. And you're going to move to the top of the strut assembly and take off the three 14 millimeter nuts at the top. After that, you're going to loosen the lower sh uh, shock mount bolt it's 19 millimeters now we're going to take out the strut assembly and the biggest difference that a 4Runner with KDSS has is that you're not unhooking the sway bar. The lower control arm is not just going to fall down. You're not going to be able to use a jack to lower this. Um, you're going to have to manually force that lower control arm down. And I used a long pry bar on the camber adjust nut on the back there. It's not the best solution, but it did work. Uh, for me and just make sure the pry bar does not slip off or damage that and damage any parts around there but the key is to force down that lower control arm uh, until the strut comes off now once you get it out you're gonna have to lower the uh, force down the lower control arm and then lift up that whole hub assembly there with your rotors um, again keep that balanced on the ball joint assembly there when you're not holding it with your knees or your hands or whatever else you're using. Then you're going to change out the shock. Um, take off the original shock out of the strut assembly. Put the Bill Stein 5100. You can adjust it to whatever height you want. I just did one notch from the bottom. Uh, just be careful using a spring compressor and make smart choices. Then we're gonna put the new uh, strut assembly in and because this one, I put it up one notch from the bottom, which gives it a little bit, um, makes the shock a little bit longer, the strut assembly a little bit longer, but two, uh, it also just has a little bit more pressure, um, which made it more difficult. So I did get some help here. Once we got the strut assembly in where it needs to be, I put a 14 millimeter uh, nut back at the top of the top of the strut uh, mount area just to hold it in there. And the next difficult part was actually getting the lower part of the strut assembly, the lower part of the shock, in the housing area there. And again, this this may um, this was very difficult just due to the, the travel length of the new shock and uh, just how much pressure that needed, how much weight, how much pressure needed to be put on that lower control arm. Now, this is where I did go over. I did jack up the other side. Um, it did give me enough clearance to get it in there. Um, I had to put all my weight uh, on 
on the lower control arm on that pry bar to force it down. My wife pushed it in the housing area there at the bottom, which I just showed. And again, once it's in there, it wasn't completely in. I actually had to flip a pry bar upside down and kind of keep prying it in there, which um, which helped out. Now, now we're on the downhill, obviously, but the third difficult part of this job is getting this lower shock bolt in. Um, it does go from the back to the front. I did not get this on video, but here is what I did. Um, once I slid that into the pretty close position, I put a screwdriver in. You could probably use anything that fits, and I kind of used that to get, um, get that adjusted where the hole needs to be for the shock. Once I could get the shock bolt started from the back, I used this pry bar to get my height, and I kept going back and forth with that. Now we're back to reassembling everything. And then go to your trusted mechanic garage and get a four wheel alignment and that's it. Hopefully this video helped. Thanks for watching and go enjoy your forerunner.